Welcome to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design. And today we have Brian Delman here, who is the head of business development for Strata Cash. And uh, his company actually, they turn paper displays into digital screens, bringing dynamic experiences to life. So Brian, thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. So Brian, along the path of your career or even in Strata Cash, has there been something that at the time just seemed like, oh, wow, we just got knock, knocked off our feet and then later turned into something great? Yeah. Listen, it's always easy to get knocked off your feet uh, being a leader in, at a sales company, right? Always, you know, fail by design is, is kind of the thing. And I would say biggest failures for, for me were becoming an, a leader initially, you know, you get very excited when you have this opportunity in front of you. And the challenge is you're put into this role because they feel like, you know, absolutely everything that needs to happen. And, it, and you internalize that. I do need to know all the aspects of the business. I do need to be the, the go-to. I do need to have all the answers. And what, what you find when you're put into that position, it, it's a trap because you're going to be leading a lot of people. I had five managers and a floor of 75 people under me. And the challenge is knowing everything does not allow others to be creative. It doesn't allow others to bring ideas to the table. And that's where you fail, you lose value in your team. Um, and then you really have nothing left. You lose credibility, you lose how people view you as a leader and your team starts to kind of untangle. And, you know, after I had left that, that position, I moved on to building teams from scratch. And I, I knew to myself, I had to build teams for the people that brought things to the table that were better than what I could bring to the table. And then by allowing them to be creative and me be more of just the guide. And I see that failure in a lot of people today. And I think that the, the challenge is you really do have to kind of put your ego to the side when you're a leader and, and you want to build up the people around you, not necessarily direct the people around you. I mean, that's great advice. Yeah. So I would be, that's the biggest, the biggest failure that turned out to where I'm able to build successful teams today is because I had to live through, live through that failure. How long have you been with Strata Cash now? It'd be three years in July. And have you seen a lot of evolution of that technology? Yeah, actually it's, it's pretty wild. I always came from SaaS or in, intangible type of of solutions where this is much more tangible touch and feel. And, and it's, it's pretty wild to see you know, augmented reality, virtual reality, driving a lot of what the future of technology is. A lot of the cool stuff we can do with, with retailers, real life experiences in person, and not just walking through the aisles and picking things off the shelf, but having technology there to interact with products, compare products, find other products that are value, suggestive products that you might not have thought to purchase, but now you can purchase. But it all really builds the customer experience as well, because you, there's not always somebody there to help you. And this is the ability for brands to bring their sales quality, their sales gurus to the table on the spot where the customer is making a buying decision in person, all through digital screens and technology. So it's pretty wild to kind of see that evolution happen for in-store. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, I, I've seen now they have the displays at some of these fast food restaurants where the person taking your order is not in the US. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you can do a lot now with virtual technology, right? And I think the pandemic kind of threw a lot of companies into how do I maneuver through this, this new hybrid world of where people don't want to stand next to me. They just want to touch a screen and not have to worry about, you know, catching COVID kind of changed the way that a lot of businesses have, have interacted with customers, but also interacted with their employees and, and digital signage is the perfect fix for that because you can do a lot with it. I think where we excel and what I always try and tell clients, partners that we're talking to, it's not about just putting technology there, but it's about the experience first. The technology is just a vessel. You know, brands still want to give that great experience. So you just have to make sure that your employee experience and your customer experience is your priority and the technology is just there as a compliment. But yeah, those kiosks are great, contactless pickup shelves. And, you know, I look at like going into like a Home Depot for your DIY folks out there that are looking to figure out like what nail do I need for this finishing board or this framework or pictures. And there's a lot of options. There's a lot of tools. You don't always find the most help in retail situations where now you can bring experts in, you know, you can bring in 
Milwaukee can bring in an expert on a screen right there in person and be able to walk you through different product options. So it, it is pretty wild to have people from around the world be able to help you on your physical spot where you are. Yeah, I think so as well. It's great that that's where we're at. Yeah. So, Brian, is there something along your career, like in your personal life or or any time in your career that it just kind of leveled you for a minute? I mean, I don't even know where to start with that question. It's a it's a great <laughs> one. I am a very driven personality. I, I, I like to jump first and then figure out where I am after I've jumped. And that does get me into trouble sometimes, but I, I don't know what I don't know. So in order for me to get there, I have to, I have to dive in and figure it out. If I spend time talking about it or thinking about it, well then 10 minutes later, a year later, I'm still at that spot talking and thinking about it. Whereas I want to be at a spot where I can, I can put things into action. So I have definitely bit off more than I could chew. I had to teach myself recruiting, you know, when I first started. So, and that's, that, that's a tough gig. Shout out to all the recruiters out there who have, who have a tough job. And I, I fumbled through that, trying to figure out what I can say, what I can't say, how to find the right, the right personality, how to find the right person for the role where I probably could have maybe done it a little better, maybe found a mentor, maybe found, talked to a few recruiters that were already successful in doing it, but I just decided to jump in and just start doing it. I and mean, that's just kind of how I am. But it has gotten me to this point today, but it can also lead you into trouble if, you know, you don't really know what you're doing. You're going to make mistakes, but that's where I guess the learning happens, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, that's kind of part of your personality, it seems, right? I just need to do, I'm a doer, and then I'll figure it out. Like, I'll I just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just want to get it done. I found myself bringing it back to your initial question. I find myself bringing my team with me on that journey. So sometimes, you know, they're laughing at me for pie in my face, but you know, at the end of the day, like you, you, you gotta, you gotta try, you gotta do, or you're talking about it. And I think that's where people struggle. So I just want to jump into it, figure out why I'm there. I mean, it's not always fixing the plane while you're flying it. You know, I do have a lot of systems that I've created inside sales systems that are, are really solid foundations, but every company's different. So you have to be able to just get into the mix and be able to adapt And I think that's where uh, you're going to shine. What was a big win for you throughout your career that really stands out? A big win for me. I don't think there's any one particular win. I think they all add up to the, the, the wins. You know, I have built a lot of successful teams. I mean, obviously businesses are going to change as businesses move on. I, I would say I, I jumped into real estate, not knowing anything about real estate in, in my former fashion. And I met somebody who said, you know, I want to build an inside sales team that can push people to real estate agents at all of these different locations across the country. And I probably should not have jumped into it, but I did. And I was actually doing the, the role myself. So I, I had to build, obviously, the systems, build the foundation. I have a great process for that. So it was pretty easy to put that together. But it also is a financial cost. And I, I did not know how it was going to work out, but I ended up breaking even at about six months. So that was really exciting for me to at least, I like to make sure that the value is there some sales processes are much longer. So, you know, it's going to take longer to get that ROI, but I, knowing nothing about real estate and having to build those systems and making the money back that I spent in six months, I thought was a pretty big win for me. Yeah, that's excellent. And once again, you jumped in and you're like, all right, I'll figure this out. Yeah. Jump in, <laughs> figure it out. There's a lot of splits in, in real estate and the money gets chopped up and then I get to figure out what's left at the end. So it's not like you're making 6% off this million dollar house for sale. It's, well, they make their money, they make their money, the buyer makes their money, then the broker makes their money. And then, by the way, here's what's left. And you can have this, this fee for generating the lead in the first place. So like <laughs> having to add that up in small chunks definitely uh, took a while. So, Yeah, I hear you on that. Well, thank you, Brian, for coming on the show today. And thank you, everybody, for listening to Failing to Success. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow and rate the show. Like, comment, and subscribe for more great content. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design, and thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.